Hi there, everybody. I'm coming to you from the rooftop of the Rubenstein Hotel in Krakow, uh, in Kazimierz, in the Jewish district uh, of Krakow. Uh, and coming to you really from what surprised me this morning. I woke up and I, I came up to the balcony here and to the roof and saw just the most tremendous location. And, and it was obvious for me that I had to share this and uh, show this uh, to my friends across the world and also discuss with you uh, a few of the different things that have been happening uh, over this week. Uh, first of all, I'll just show you a little bit of what you can see from up here. Uh, from up here, from the top, uh, over there is the Ramal Synagogue, one of the oldest synagogues in Krakow, all the way through Soroka Square, where the Jewish festival took, Jewish cultural festival took place last night. Uh, further back towards the rest of Krakow, towards the other side, over there you can see the castle, the Rinnik, uh, and the rest of beautiful Krakow. Uh, but that's not really the reason why I wanted to share with uh, all of my friends and followers and everybody else watching from around the world. Uh, this week's been uh, an interesting week, or the week that was, I should say, was an interesting week from uh, a very public letter um, that we sent to AOC, to Congresswoman Cortez, uh, asking her uh, to join us uh, in visiting the German Nazi concentration camps uh, with Holocaust survivor Edward Mossberg to see for herself what a concentration camp broody is and to have an understanding again in my personal belief i don't think she was doing it in ill faith and i don't think that what she said was something as an attack towards the jewish community or anything like that rather you have to understand she like i am and like a lot of people watching this she's a millennial uh as we know in the united states alone 66 percent of millennials haven't even heard of auschwitz birkenau and really in, even in turn, her refusing our um, invitation to come with Holocaust survivor Mos Edward Mossberg to visit us in the concentration camps did a massive service. It did a huge service to Holocaust education. Uh, and the reason why it did a massive service to Holocaust education was because it brought the message further. Now, I really appreciate and understand the work of all the incredible institutions dealing with Holocaust Memory Memorial be it museums and these, you know, great people doing great things and all the academics doing the academic work, but it's not working. It's, or I should say it's working to a degree. Now, a lot of people will be angry with me for saying this, but we can see it and we can see it in the facts. The fact that the majority of American millennials have never heard of Auschwitz-Birkenau means that something is broken and something isn't working. And this is why approaches like ours are also important. Again, this doesn't cancel the work that's being done by other incredible institutions, but it means that there's space also for people like us to be a little bit different in our approach, to be perhaps more aggressive, to perhaps push a little harder, which is exactly what we did with the Congresswoman by approaching and by sending the letter. We're going to be taking a few more actions with Holocaust survivor Mossberg over the next week um, to push forward and to make sure that this message is heard even broader. But in addition to that, we also had a remarkable trip this week of the legend, Mike Tyson, obviously the former heavyweight champion of the world, uh, out to Poland. Mike Tyson was here uh, promoting an energy drink from one of the uh, food companies here in Poland. And we were able to work with them to take Mike and to show him uh, the sites of the Warsaw Uprising, the Warsaw Ghetto Uprising, make sure that he visited Poland Jewish Museum and had an opportunity to see these places and learn from them. And really, when Mike afterwards went back and wrote the Facebook post, which I'm sure all of you have seen, if not, I'll link it below. When Mike Tyson went and released that on his Facebook to his 7.7 .7 million followers, it really changed the understanding of so many people who will be reading Mike's Facebook. Now, you know, let's face it, the majority of people who follow Mike Tyson aren't following him to learn about history. And I'm pretty certain that within the statistics of those who have never heard of Holocaust education before, or have never heard of Auschwitz-Birkenau, by seeing Mike Tyson's post, it changes that. And it gives these people a deeper and a stronger understanding of history. So really, from all of these different actions that we took over the last week through AOC, through Mike Tyson, at the end of the day, it was nothing more than promoting and pushing Holocaust education and memory and memorial. Now, the third thing I wanted to speak to you about is this in ridiculous new wave of attack uh, on me uh, here in Poland by the alt-right. Um, the alt-right is a small but very loud and very 
aggressive group here in Poland. Uh, in numerous interviews over the last few years that I've given here in Poland, people have asked me about a negative attitude towards Poles. And one of the examples I bring up uh, is, is, a, is an issue. And it's an issue of the fact that when someone comes for the first time, for example, to Poland, and the only place that he'll visit is the German Nazi death camp of, of Auschwitz-Birkenau, he'll, he'll go there and you leave Auschwitz with, with a real strong feeling of wanting to hate and a very strong feeling of anger um, and upset. Now, what do you do with this anger and upset? Who do you take that out on? Now, there aren't Germans around nor Nazis to, to, to scream at and to be angry with or to, to feel anger towards. Or do you see a Poles because of the unfortunate position of Auschwitz-Birkenau concentration camp, the German Nazi camp being built on occupied Poland during the Second World War. And with that being said, when you go there and all you see are, for example, Polish police and Polish security, it does create a level of anxiety and anger towards those people who are, per se, controlling this place today. Now, it, it's a tricky issue, and one of the thoughts I had was, first of all, uh, I don't think that Poland uh, is responsible and should be paying for the upkeep and maintenance of Auschwitz-Birkenau. I absolutely believe that the entire budget for everything that needs to take place there, from the incredible work that they're doing in maintaining the site and in making sure that the site is, remains exactly how it was, which is a very painstaking and difficult task, to the security that's necessary in a place like this, I absolutely believe that this should be paid for entirely by Germany. Uh, the Germans were 100% responsible for the Holocaust. If it wasn't for the Nazi Germans, the Holocaust would have never happened. The responsibility falls on the German people who elected the Nazis as their party, who elected Hitler as their leader. Uh, so therefore, the Germans should be paying for this 100%. And in terms of the security and the people maintaining the site, there, there I had the idea that perhaps there should be some kind of international body that takes care of it. Now, this has been flipped and my words have been changed uh, by the alt-right media here in Poland to saying some kind of ridiculous uh, attacks that I'm looking to annex Auschwitz-Birkenau, uh, which is absolute nonsense. Um, and it's turned from something that was a little bit ridiculous a few weeks ago into members of parliament um, speaking about this and, and tweeting about it and going on anti-Semitic um, sort of, I wouldn't even call them news sites, fake sites, uh, discussing this issue. So this is also one part of this, you know, tiresome fight against anti-Semitism that I'm facing on really a, a daily basis here. Uh, and it's getting pretty frustrating. Um, but, you know, if anything, it makes me uh, double down and fight harder. Uh, when someone, I'm the kind of guy that if someone tells me I can't do something, I'm going to probably do it even more. Um, so, you know, it, it doesn't bother me too much. But this is a lot and just wanted to share with all of you about a lot of what I'm facing here at the moment. So really from this remarkable week of, of fighting with AOC to taking Mike Tyson to, you know, fighting with anti-Semites to have Shabbat here, which I did in Krakow, uh, finishing with this incredible uh, Jewish festival, Jewish cultural festival that took place last night, the 29th year. Um, it, it was really amazing. And, and that festival gives you uh, a true hope Right? Because if one was just to look and read and, and see through Twitter and Facebook and base that on their feeling and their understanding towards people, it would be a pretty dark and deep and depressing place. But this square last night was filled with over 10,000 people, the majority of whom were non-Jews, dancing to klezmer and Moroccan music and all different kinds of Jewish culture from around the world. And really, this is just a wonderful uh, and a positive way of, of finishing what was again a long week and stepping into a new week ahead um, with a lot of great opportunity uh, and very very exciting things. So from here in Krakow, from Soroka Square, from Kazimierz, uh, I bid you all a, a good week, a Shavua Tov, uh, and for friends of mine in Warsaw I'll see you this week, in Tel Aviv I'll see you this week, and in London I'll see you this week as well, and maybe even New York. So from a beginning of an incredibly long week ahead I wish you all a Shavua Tov, a good week, Kotov, late out, all the best, goodbye, do vidzenia.